Chris Shanty, and in the next two segments of Homemade Science, we're going to take a look at some simple balancing toys. I'm going to show you some easy pieces that you can make for yourself. So let's get started. This first piece is called the waving hand. I sometimes use this when we look at pendulums and periodic motion. Now to start with, you need a picture of a hand. You either can find one on the internet or simply sketch the front and back of your own hand and then paste them onto a piece of heavy stock cardboard. The small block that holds the hand has a narrow slit cut in it and the hand simply is going to fit into that slot. There we go. Now the extension is simply a food skewer and we'll fit that in there. The next piece is a small wooden down. It has three holes drilled in it. And that skewer is simply going to fit into the middle hole. Right like that. Two more skewers fit into the other two holes. And they're going to extend down to the square wooden block. And put those in. And there it is. To get it to wave. I simply rest it on a meter stick, give it a little push, now one of the questions I have for my students is what would happen to the period if we removed that hand and the skewer that's holding it from the rest of the pendulum? We'll answer that in a later video when we take a look at some other very unusual pendulums. The balancing butterflies have been especially popular with younger students. They're easy to make, and we've balanced them on all sorts of things. I started with printing some patterns on some heavy stock paper. Next, add the holes for the wires to go through. The balancing wire goes through the first two holes, something like this. The end of the wire is bent over a few times to attach each antenna wire. Both wires are wrapped around this knot and then extend down to act as the butterfly's legs. The balancing wire is curved and then has a paper clip added for additional weight. Let's go over and try it on the meter stick. And here's a few more that we had the students color in as part of a STEM program. These eagles are popular balancing toys. Their center of gravity is located at the beak. We can make our own version of the eagle, or in this case, a butterfly. This butterfly is balancing on his proboscis. I started with a regular picture of a butterfly, put it on my computer, and then stretched its wings forward. I glued that to heavy stock cardboard, cut it out, added some color to it. The two washers are glued to the front edge of the butterfly's wings, and these three wires are glued so that they appear to come out of the butterfly's head. There's our balancing butterfly. I've had students make all sorts of balancing objects out of wire. I'd start by going online and finding the animal that I wanted to trace, make a picture of it in the size that I wanted, I'd then bend the wire to match the outline of that picture. I think one of my favorites is this dolphin. This one was really easy to make. Once again, I went online and found the animal that I wanted, printed it to the size I wanted, and then took the wire and made that outline. The body and the balancing wire is one piece, and then additional pieces we used for the fins and the eye. With a little imagination, you can make all sorts of balancing toys. This ladybug was made by cutting a foam ball in half, and then using some wire for the balancing and the legs and a little bit of coloring and here it is.
You can find all sorts of examples of balancing toys online, and simpler versions are very easy to make. This tiger would be a good example. It was made with foam board, paper, wire, and a steel nut for added weight. I start with a picture of a tiger, but I need a reverse image of it also. So I'm going to take a ink marker and trace out the line very quickly here so we can just see an example of how it's done. The ink will actually bleed through to the other side, giving me a reverse image. So if I copy the whole thing, that'll give me the picture for the opposite side. I'd start by gluing one picture onto the foam board and then cut it out. And then on the opposite side, I would glue the reverse image. Add a little bit of color and then take a piece of wire and stick it through the foam board at the foot, curve it down, put a weight on it, and then bend it so that the tiger bounces at the position that you want. He looks pretty fierce. Now when we're looking at balancing objects, there's all sorts of tricks that you can do out there. Uh, it can be as simple as taking this hammer and seeing if I can balance it on the pole. If I right, find that right position, right there, it balances. The bar is supporting that hammer at its center of gravity. Gravitational forces on either side of this position are trying to turn the hammer in opposite directions. These efforts trying to turn the hammer are called torques, and when these torques are equal, well, the hammer balances. In this case, the center of gravity is supported by the bar directly underneath it. An object can also be supported above its center of gravity. In this case, I'll use a ruler and a piece of string and support the hammer from above. So once again, this is an example of having the support directly above the center of gravity. So the support for the butterfly can either be below the center of gravity, like here, or in this example, we have the center of gravity being supported from above. Well, I hope you see how easy it is to make some balancing objects. Now, if you go on to part two, we're going to take a look at some balancing objects that turn.